Welcome to this Chemscape presentation on the hazards of methanol. Methanol is a clear colorless liquid that is also an alcohol. Other common names are wood alcohol or methyl alcohol. Methanol is a natural byproduct of our environment, as well as a byproduct of the human and animal digestive process. On a commercial scale, methanol is created from natural gas, but it can also be made from renewable sources like waste, biomass, and recycled carbon dioxide. Methanol is used as an antifreeze, solvent, and fuel. It can be diluted and used for pressure testing. It's also used for producing biodiesel and in fuel cells. Methanol is primarily used in making other chemicals, including plastics, paints, adhesives, and plywood. Precaution needs to be taken to prevent exposure through the four routes of entry into the body, including contact with the eye or skin, inhalation and ingestion, or absorbed into the skin. Methanol is very toxic if inhaled, ingested, or absorbed into the skin. It will target certain organs and cause long-term damage. If even a small amount of methanol is swallowed, it can be fatal. It can also cause blindness. Methanol is an eye irritant. A small exposure can cause long-term eye damage. Methanol is a skin irritant. Repeated skin contact with methanol can cause dermatitis with dryness and cracking. Methanol has some significant physical hazards as well. When methanol catches fire, it burns with a clear blue flame that is very difficult to see in clear light. People have been badly burned by walking through an invisible methanol fire. Methanol vapors are heavier than air, causing a hazard if there is a release in confined spaces and low-lying areas. Methanol is potentially explosive if vapor is released and is in contact with an ignition source. If methanol is ingested, inhaled, or absorbed through the skin, it is important to seek immediate medical attention. Methanol, if ingested even in small amounts, is very toxic and can lead to blindness. Methanol poisoning can be treated by a trained medical professional, but a quick response is critical for a good outcome. Symptoms of methanol ingestion and poisoning include abdominal pain, shortness of breath, vomiting, convulsions, and unconsciousness. People can also experience blurred vision and blindness. Methanol is very toxic if inhaled. It will target certain organs and cause long-term damage. It is critical to remove the victim to fresh air if it is safe to do so and seek medical attention. Symptoms of methanol inhalation exposure include cough, dizziness, headache, nausea, weakness, and visual disturbance. First aid for minor skin contact to methanol requires washing exposed skin with water for a minimum of five minutes. Significant skin exposure to methanol requires removal of contaminated clothing and a safety shower of 20 minutes. Seek medical attention as required. Eye exposure to methanol can cause long-term eye damage. Any exposure to the eye requires immediate first aid, like an eye wash for 15 minutes. Follow up with immediate medical attention. Let's use the hierarchy of controls to review good work practices to limit methanol exposure. For more information on methanol, review the product safety data sheet. Ask your supervisor for clarification if necessary. If possible, other less hazardous or less flammable solvents should be substituted for methanol. In fuels, ethanol may be used as a substitute for methanol. In some cases, methanol can be diluted with water to reduce the hazard. Engineering controls contain the substance, remove the substance from the air, or provide a barrier between the worker and the substance. Examples of engineering controls that can be used to prevent exposure to methanol include installation of local exhaust ventilation hoods, ventilated enclosures around work processes like fume hoods and glove boxes, use of closed piping and storage systems, and use of automatic systems to pump methanol from storage. If engineering controls are working properly, they will eliminate or greatly reduce the potential hazard. Engineering controls only work if they are used as directed and well-maintained. If the equipment fails, stop work and contact a supervisor immediately. Good hygiene prevents unintended ingestion. Wash hands before eating, drinking, or smoking. Do these activities away from the work area. When working around methanol, protect yourself by wearing PPE that matches the exposure risk. 
For example, when working with a low risk of exposure to methanol, wear coveralls, nitro gloves, safety glasses, and boots. High risk of exposure to methanol vapors and large volumes of liquid require a full chemical suit, butyl rubber gloves, compressed breathing air, self-contained breathing apparatus, and boots. Methanol has a faint alcohol odor. If you smell methanol, safety has already been compromised as methanol needs to be 10 times higher than the safe limit for human exposure when you start to smell it. This reason makes the presence of an odor a poor indicator of exposure. It is also important to wear a portable gas monitor that continuously scans the air and alarm set at specified concentrations for lower explosive or flammable limit. This is different than OEL levels. Methanol measurements will confirm safe levels for humans and local regulations. Colorimetric detection tubes or portable gas monitors are used to measure methanol concentration in the air. Gas monitors provide continuous readings of methanol in the atmosphere, and alarms can be set to warn workers of high levels. Since methanol vapors are easily ignited and prone to explosion, sources of ignition need to be prohibited on site. This includes no smoking, no running vehicles, no cell phones, no laptops, no power tools. Smoking or vaping needs to be restricted to a designated area where there is no potential for methanol vapors. Other controls are required to control ignition sources, including restricting vehicle access, use of non-sparking tools, use of safe electronics. If a non-intrinsically safe electronic is used, like a laptop, it should have a safe work permit and precautions in place. A no-ignition zone perimeter should be outlined. Hot work is an activity that creates heat, flame, sparks, or smoke, like cutting, grinding, or welding. Hot work is the number one contributing factor to fatalities involving methanol. Hot work should have permits and safe work practices in place, as well as a fire watch. If there is a fire, only attempt to extinguish the fire if it is safe to do so. Otherwise, call 911. Foam, powder, CO2 gas, and water spray fire extinguishers will disrupt the chemical chain reaction that fuels methanol fires. Do not use a heavy water stream, which may spread the fire. Storage and handling considerations for methanol include Keep containers closed, except during transfer. Use secondary containment. Store in a designated and restricted area. Grounding is especially important in protecting methanol from accidental ignition, resulting from static discharge. Static can develop when fluid moves through a transfer system and builds up. If methanol is transferred between containers, ensure the equipment is bonded together and grounded, including dip pipes, conductive hose, and pump. Emergency response for small spills. 1. Control the release if it is safe to do so. 2. If there are noxious vapors, evacuate, sound a vapor release alarm, and notify supervisor. 3. Eliminate all sources of ignition. 4. Evacuate all persons not wearing PPE from the immediate spill area. 5. Do not walk through spill. Avoid skin contact and inhalation. 6. Stay upwind and keep out of low-lying areas that might accumulate vapor. Small spills can be remediated with sand, earth, or other non-combustible absorbent material like kitty litter, and the area then flushed with water. For large spills or fire, you need to call 911 immediately. That concludes this presentation on methanol. If you have further questions, please contact your health and safety representative.